What is good, Greg Gang? We're here today. We're actually going to be doing a 1v1 survival challenge. Me versus Adam. Now, to survive, we're not staying 24 hours or anything, but a lot of you guys wanted to see this. And I'll tell you this right now. If we can get 15,000 likes on this video, we will make a 24-hour challenge happen. But what we're doing in this video is we're going to get them three main things we need to survive out here in the survivalness, I guess. What a wilderness. Yeah, wilderness. Food, water, and shelter. And me and Adam, we're all going to go through, do our own separate things. Now, me and Adam, we only get two tools. We can both have a little bit of string, string about as much as we want. And then, of course, we get the pocket knife. Just a simple little knife. We both have one of these. And so, what are we doing first? Food, water, or shelter? I'll let you guys choose. Water. First, we're going to get up our profiles, though, of the two competitors. Our first contestant is Adam Lake, also known as Bird Dog around the Walmart cashier community. Adam can be found in a number of places, such as Register 3 at our local Walmart, in the bathroom, or his other bathroom. Adam is a professional battle royale player and an eight-time Olympic gold medalist in basket weave. Adam has suffered three cases of hypothermia within the last three months. And this is your first contestant. And on to our next contestant, Kendall Gray, 165 pounds of pure KFC chicken. Kendall specializes in eating many species of animals. Most are not meant to be eaten. And if you're not careful, you may be next. Kendall shares many characteristics with Luke Bryan, but trust me, this is not LeBron. Kendall can commonly be found on trail cameras, the post office, and playing pranks on local possums. This is your second contestant on Survivalist May Survival. Okay guys, so Abram and Adam, they're on up there looking for water. I'm actually going for a different approach. I'm going for the contours of the earth. I'm just going to go to the lowest point and try to find some flowing creek water. It's rained a lot the past couple of days, so I shouldn't have any problem finding some pretty quick moving water. Let's head on down. Let's see what we can get. Right here is what we're looking at. Right down there in that divot is actually where, you know, the water's running. Because like I was saying, following the contours of the earth, all the rain water is going to drain down this way. All the rain water from that side is going to drain down. And it's going to collect right down here in the creek. And then it's even going to go on down. And I think there's a pond down there that pond however is really muddy and i think i can find cleaner more pure water still going on down the mountain my strategy for finding water is rainwater. it's the easiest source of water to find and just as we see here we got drip ones of water now i know it's safe because there's leaves in here and that's a purified source already so you would yeah that's the cleanest water you can find these here are acorn shells and i looked right on wikipedia last night that they have a purifying little leaf in there and it gets all the bacteria right in there. And I know how that's clean. So I'm gonna show you another way to find water. Oh yeah, here we go. We got some good water now. We got a few puddles here, but we really don't want to take it out of the puddles. And here's why. Let's take a look at this part right here. We got flowing water, then we got a puddle. Even though there may not be a ton of contaminants or stuff living in that water, it's more likely that they're living there than there are right here in the fast moving water. So if you're ever drinking water out of the creek, if you want to pick the best spot, I'd say pick right there, right there where the water's actually falling over and it's moving the fastest. So for the water on my survival situation, I'm going this right here. Looks pretty clean. It's definitely cold, so I mean, I guess if it's a hot day, I'll get refreshed or whatever. I think we're good here. Okay, next, you see we have a mountain of moss. What I like to do is, whenever I was a survivalist guide in Australia, we'd rip it up and we'd squeeze it. And you can, and you can drink it like that without even having to purify it because moss is another purifier what's something else we could do with water it's not one on two survival it's one on one i'm just a camera guy i'm not good at this he's playing in there talking away getting his time to 10 minutes on water one thing that we're actually doing today is we're not going to be drinking the water that we find simply because we're not actually surviving we're just doing the 1v1 survival challenge if we were out here really surviving we would drink the water but just because we're not actually surviving there's still a pretty good risk that can go along with drinking that water it could be dangerous we don't know also what i've heard on wikipedia last night is if you follow the moss there's a good source of purified water somewhere close look here moss all the way around I think it's getting close. Look here. Some of the cleanest water you'll find. It even says purified. They always say don't believe what you read on the internet. But that, sir, is true. And so now we're moving on to food. Now, this can be anything edible. If I can find some blackberries, that's perfectly okay. But then again, it's like March. Yeah, we're not exactly going to be able to find any blackberries out here. So I think I'm going to have to go for some kind of meat source. Now, I have an idea of what we're doing. Since it is warming up, the fish are going to be more and more active every single day. Therefore, my idea to collect food is going to be centered around fish. Now, I'm going to try to make a fish spear, a fish gig in a way. So what I need is a long, straight, green stick. Now, right here, I'm not trying to be picky. This is a long straight stick it's pretty tall it's pretty thin that's about what i want i don't want anything too crazy i'm gonna come in here with my cagey pocket knife and uh slowly but surely 
we're gonna cut this tree down and there we go i got the stick i need now i'm just gonna sharpen it a little bit more split it and then i'll show you a little bit more about that anyhow i smell skunk oh geez so what kendall doesn't know is i brought a pack of sardines from my mom's pantry and i like to put these underneath the trees get good smell sent to them mm, fish you put it right there you talk about getting possums and then i like to find a local big rock somewhere nearby and i'll camp behind that tree just like this And dang, you got a dead possum. That's your weapon? That's my weapon. Just a oh. big boulder. You can find them anywhere. Nice. So, Avery, I want you to hide behind that tree. And in the next couple minutes, you'll see a possum come by and I'll smash his head. Now, a possum can't see me because I'm wearing a KG Optic hat. You can also get this at kendallgray.com slash shop. Kendallgray1.com. Kendallgray1.com slash shop. Now, the possum can't see me because I'm wearing this Kendallgray Optic hat. You can get this at Kendall Gray One slash shop. Kendall Gray One dot com <laughs> slash shop. <laughs> Edit that out. Now the possum won't be able to see me because I'm wearing this camo Kendall Gray optic hat. You can get this on Kendall Gray One com slash shop. Kendall Gray Kendall Gray One dot com. Oh my god, this sucks. I don't know how he does it. So now we'll sit here for a minute. All right. Going all out. And so now I made my gig. It's nothing pretty, but listen, guys, if it's just a little fish, I can pin it to the ground. If I find a frog, I can also pin that to the ground. Maybe not so much kill it instantly, but I can pin it down until I can get down there and kill it myself. I think we can really do some good with this. So my plan for shelter is, um, I usually take what the wilderness gives me. So I like to look around and see some big sticks and I like to make a big teepee. But if I see something else in mind, I'll take it too. Right here, here's like one of the perfect size sticks you need. And you want to make sure it's not too dead or, cause it, you don't want to, you know, want that to break easy. <laughs> oh, that one's perfect, okay. Uh, this one right here looks good, but it's a little muddy, so. You also want a, a pretty big one like this. This is for your support. This one's got worms in it. You want to make sure this one's durable too. Oh, well, we can't use that one. There's big worms in there. Worms are good for food. Hey, that's dinner. We'll work our way down the mountain here. And then a little coverage. You know, on top of your house. So step 12, you want to start getting extra leaves and putting it in the cracks. Oh, wait. Adam, uh, I think I accidentally pressed a button and deleted steps 1 through 11 of making the shelter. I lost like 15 minutes of footage there. Sorry. It's the best thing I've done today. Sorry, man. Well, you could give us a little tour of it. Welcome to my crib. We have these beautiful birch trees, birch leaves, some greenery for decoration on top. I cut these all by hand. Well, actually, a KG knife. Where can you get that? Kendall Gray. Well, Kendall Gray one slash shop. Kendall Gray one dot com slash shop. Okay. Kendall Gray one slash. Dang it. <laughs> what is it again? Ah, I don't know how he does it. Kendall Gray. Kendall Gray one dot com slash shop. You can get one of these at Kendall Gray one dot com slash shop link in the description down below i'm gonna get down here and show you how cozy it is i don't, I don't know if there's any snakes or anything down here but uh it'll definitely keep the rain off of you and that's about it you probably won't get no sleep but uh you'll be dry and so now we got food water both those out of the way now it's up to shelter now i don't i have an idea of what i'm gonna do not 100 percent sure yet there's a couple different options but i tell you what guys the sky's kind of getting cloudy i'm just gonna put you guys down and get to work there we go and there we go guys i think we're good for the shelter now i'm not gonna lie guys it took me about 10 minutes to build this but nevertheless guys i think we got it we got this big stick leaned down a bunch of sticks laid over top of it and then i threw a bunch of leaves on it just now took me a little while but i got it done let me take y'all down in my crib so as we're getting down in here i mean i guess It'll keep you dry, but you may not be able to sleep. Overall, guys, there's my shelter. It's a lean-to. Now, that's what you call a 20-minute build. So, now that me and Adam are completely done with food, water, and shelter, it's time to bring in the expert. I don't know how to say his name, but I'm just going to let him introduce himself. Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. Tell him who you are. Tell the gray guy. Hi, uh, my name is Dr. Satya Mulani, PhD, DMD. I studied survival and primitive technology for 12 years at Harvard University. Somehow we got this scholar down here to judge our 1v1. Okay, Dr. Mulani, come on over here and take a seat, and I'll let you go ahead and grade Adam on his test. Nice to meet you, Dr. Nice Mulani. Nice to meet you. All right, so uh, what I observed from the um, process that Adam used to find water, uh, he found 
uh, a good clean source of water uh, with the moss uh, is a great strategy. Um, I've seen many uh, survival experts use this strategy. I've never seen anybody die using the method that Adam used to find water. It's a, it's the perfect strategy, really. I say he gets a 10 out of 10. Nice to meet you, Mr. Salami. Thank you for having me. All right, so I observed Kendall's water source. It's it's an acceptable uh, method of finding water for survival. If that's your last resort, then it's a perfectly acceptable way to find water. You know, with the water source that Kendall used, um, there is some significant risk for infection and parasites, such as malaria, tapeworm, and uh, African trypanosomiasis. Uh, it's common in the Americas. You can live with a parasite, but there is some sig significant risks involved. With that said, I say Kendall probably gets a uh, seven out of 10 for water. All right, Adam, uh, I think your shelter, as far as shelter goes, I think your your plan was flawless. Definitely will withstand the elements, you know, wind, rain, and such. Um, I don't really see any reason why his shelter couldn't have lasted a month or something. For shelter, you, you should get a, at least a nine, yeah, probably 10 out of 10 on shelter, I think. Thank you, doctor. All right, Kendall, uh, so I observed your shelter earlier. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think you had some good ideas, a, a good plan, uh, m maybe, execution might not have been as good as Adam's. I'd say you probably would be able to, you know, protect yourself from rain and wind and such. You might not get much sleep. Sleep is very important for survival. Mm -hmm. uh, humans really need sleep. To be completely honest, uh, you know, I, I'm a little sleepy right now. With that being said, I think your um, shelter was probably the best aspect of your survival plan. I would give it an 8 out of 10. Thank you, Doctor. You're welcome. And now our contestants go on for the third and final aspect of survival. You know, I observed your method of gathering food. You didn't kill anything uh, with your with your weapon, but I feel like if we would have waited uh, a couple hours, I'd say easily, um, if something was close by, you could have killed it. You probably could have killed uh, two animals, you know, really. Had an animal sandwich. Uh, like I said with the water, this was also a strategy borrowed from survival experts. Uh, it's been used for several decades, going all the way back to the um, 1930s. With that being said, I think uh, your method of gathering food was flawless. You get a 10 out of 10 for food gathering. Well, Doctor, it was nice meeting with you. Nice to meet you, too. Have a nice day. With Adam's perfect score spanning all across the board, this leaves Kendall scratching his head about what the final outcome could possibly be. Okay, Kendall, uh, can you show me your weapon? I, I wasn't able to observe it earlier. Here it is. Uh-huh, I see. Wow. Thank you. Kendall, I have to say, this is a genius method for finding food during a survival situation. Um, I see you've got the sharp tips here. Mm -hmm. uh, very sturdy. Absolutely. Whenever you stab something with it, it doesn't bend much. It's, it's as good as you're going to get from, from the wild. I've never seen that before. That was very inventive of you. I would probably give you a score of 15 out of 10. Which... Bruh. With Kendall's final score of 15, that leaves both Adam and Kendall tied at the score of 30. And so as the tradition of the show goes, the tiebreaker must be throwing knives. First up we got Adam. Throw it into that tree. First one to stick it wins. Hey, hey now, don't get too close. Right there. Right there. <clears throat> stick it in, buddy. I hope you lose. Loser. Well, I guess there's not much for that, is there? Analyze this, Dr. Salami. Oh. Uh, it's definitely in there. All right, now do I have a time to match it? Unfortunately, game rules specify that the first person to stick the knife in the tree breaks the tie. Therefore, um, you do not get to match Adam's try. Adam has won the survival competition. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. So Adam, now that you won the competition, what are you gonna do with your handful of rocks? Well, I plan on putting my iguana aquarium. What would you do if we told you we were giving you two handfuls of rocks? I gotta die, I'll kill Adam. So anyways, Adam, it's been a great time having you on the show. We'll see you back next time on The Incredible Outdoorsman. Hit that like button, subscribe to Kendall Gray. Hashtag Jesus.